All right, so this is a quick tutorial just going over the use of the image generator from points um, that I uh, partially generated here. Uh, I used some of the some resources that from uh, so his name is uh, Taiwei Tong, <laughs> um, but uh, he's got a blog and then he has a bunch of uh, resources on here and he actually has um, some definitions that you can look up uh, so you can see exactly how some of these wiring diagrams start to work. Um, through his stuff. Uh, based on some of his notes, I've gone through and actually regenerated this uh, in a little bit simpler format um, and gives you a little bit more flexibility with some of the stuff that um, you guys are trying to, you might try and do. So, uh, there's a couple things that this does. What this eventually will end up doing, and I'll just turn on the preview here, is it's going to, uh, based on input points, it's going to generate a tessellated triangular pattern um, and that is going to re-represent an image so you can utilize this to start to create um, some graphics and it also will give you sort of visual consistency um, that we can go through and talk about here uh, in a second. Um, it has a couple of inputs. Obviously there's an image, uh, so if you double click on this guy you can come in here and set your own image. Um, so you can go through and find whatever image it is that you're uh, wanting to see uh, or modify. And then you need you can come in here and if you click this it'll set the dimensions uh, for that particular um, this window here for that guy. Uh, Sometimes when this loads, it has removed the paneling tools. Uh, you'll need to generate a bounding rectangle for our uh, bounding uh, envelope here. And then you want to set the X and Y that equivalent to the um, pixel dimensions of your image. So we have image size that's uh, obviously appropriately located. Um, and then we have some boundary points um, that this is going to divide that rectangle uh, all along those edges. So if we see that, you see that turns green along that edge. And um, that's just basically going to give us a nice uh, sort of pattern on there, so this thing will visualize uh, better. You can see what happens if we drop that down to zero. It doesn't visualize as nicely. And so just bump that up to somewhere around there. Um, so what this is doing is this is taking a set of input points, and I'm just going to delete that. And if I double click, I can type this and go to add point. And so whenever you guys go the, through this, it's going to look like this if you download it. Um, you want to take this and you're going to, first you want to assign the points, then plug it in. I found that when you run this definition, if you don't do that, uh, it tends to run very, very slowly. Uh, and so that'll just save you guys a little bit of lag on that. Uh, so this takes the, those set of points, does a uh, Delaunay mesh, uh, does a uh, face boundary, so it finds the, the boundary edges of those, uh, each one of those triangles. Um, creates, uh, finds a discontinuity, so finds each one of those corners, uh, and then basically calculates the centroid uh, based on that. Uh, then we get the division of points from the, around the bounding box. Uh, we merge that into one collection of points. So you see that, and then create a new Delaunay mesh. Um, then that gets then exploded, and so we get our faces. And then we run through and do uh, a mesh face analysis, run that through to get um, values from the actual image that we're sampling. And then we can run that through, um, and this is actually, uh, this is a nice, I think this is a pretty clever trick um, from uh, the same way. Um, but this is a, it can be used to start to adjust the, the colors um, uh, in the X and the Y boundaries. So we can actually control the gradient in here uh, through that. So then that merges again into a, if you think about it, a three-point coordinate uh, or an RGB value. Uh, to give us a color, and then so that we can use that. And if we right click on this, you can then bake out uh, what you're gonna do. So I'll go ahead and I'll scroll in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll back. And the way that I've done this, I'll just turn off the preview here, is I've placed a background bitmap. Um, I placed a rectangle uh, that's exactly the, right, the same size, 1000 by 1084. Uh, and then I use the background bitmap command to place that image. Uh, and then I've traced with a couple of points. As you can see that I've sort of haphazardly done this, uh, but uh, just to give you a sense of how this will work. So then uh, once those points are placed, we select them, we come in here, right click, set multiple points, and then we can just plug that in. And you can see all those things become resolved. And then we just hit uh, draw the shaded preview. And you can see the geometry's been drawn. And we can come over here and start to adjust these these guys out. And th if those points get, end up getting in the way, I can come in here and I'll hide them. And then if I right click on this, I can obviously hide the preview for that. All right. And so then from there, we can do is, if you just right click, we can bake that out. Bake that onto this. And 
so then we can pull that over. All right, so now we have, so just to show you, because obviously when uh, you're in Grasshopper, this is just a representation, it doesn't actually exist. So we render this out. You can see that it would render over here on the edge with this thing, but the, uh, the other object that we have here uh, doesn't render out. All right, and, and so that's it.